Welcome class to Chapter 7, Rhythms Originating in the Sinus Node. As we know, sinus rhythms originate from the impulse received from the sinus node, which travels to the atrium to depolarize them, heads down the normal conduction pathway, and to depolarize the ventricles. The normal heartbeat is the result of an electrical impulse that starts at the sinoatrial or SA node. Normally, pacemaker cells within the SA node spontaneously depolarize more rapidly than other cardiac cells. The SA node or sinus node uses dominant, usually dominates other areas that may be depolarizing at a slightly, slightly slower Pace. The impulse is then sent to cells at the outside edge of the SA node and then to the myocardial cell of the surrounding atrium. The rhythm that begins in the SA node has to follow certain criteria. As we know, the sinus node is the pacemaker in control unless it is by illness or death of the sinus node, a lower pacemaker usually takes over at a slower inert rate or escape rate. A lower pacemaker becomes irritable and takes over at a faster rate, which we call absorption or irritability. Inert rates of a sinus node is anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Rate can move lower higher or lower if the sinus node is acted on by systematic or polysympathetic nervous system, meaning your fright or flight or your feed or breed or your feed or breed or feed. Uh, heart rates that are too fast or too slow can cause symptoms of decreased cardiac output, meaning your last little kick you usually get. Sinus rhythms are standard, uh, standard against which all other rhythms are compared. Criteria of a sinus rhythm are this. You will have a positive upright P wave before each QRS complex. P waves will look alike. It cons a constant PR interval, meaning if you take your PR interval at the beginning, the end, or the middle, it'll all be the same. You will have a regular atrial and ventricular rhythm usually. Your heart rate can be less than or equal to 160 beats at rest. And all P waves are upright and lead to are considered sinus P waves until proven otherwise. So as you know, the normal conduction of a sinus rhythm starts at the SA node, goes down to the atrium, down to the AV node, into the ventricles, which makes your P and your Q, or S. Sinus rhythm is a normal rhythm, which impulse um, start out in the sinus node that travels through the atrium and down to the ventricle. Every P wave is what we call married to a QRS complex and the heart rate is normally anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. So these are criteria for a sinus rhythm, a normal sinus rhythm. Your rate is anywhere from 60 to 100. Your regularity is regular. Your P waves are upright matching and married to the QRS. Your PR interval is anywhere from 0 0.212 to 0 0.20 seconds, which is consistent. Your QRS is less than or greater than 0 0.12 seconds. The cause of a sinus rhythm are normal causes. There are no adverse effects and there's no treatment because this is a normal pace of what your heart's supposed to look like. This is what a sinus, normal sinus rhythm looks like. One example. The next sinus rhythm we'll talk about is the sinus bradycardia. 
Sinus bradycardia is a beat that is slower than a normal sinus rhythm, meaning it, it still the impulse still originates from the SA node, it just travels down the conduction pathway a little slower. Your QRSs will still be, can be either positive, negative, or isoelectric, depending on which lead we're looking at. If we're looking at lead one, lead two, lead three, it'll determine where it sits. For a sinus brady, your, your criteria are your rate will be anything less than 60 beats per minute. Your regularity is still regular because it is still pulsating at a regular rate. It's just at a slower regular rate. Your P waves will still be upright matching and still be married to the QRS. Causes of a sinus brady can be vagal stimulation or your patient could have suffered from MI or myocardial infarction, hypoxia, digitalis toxicity, or a well-trained athlete does have bradycardia because they have trained their heart to beat slower for endurance purposes. It's not that they're sick or anything, they just rather a slower heartbeat for longer endurance and to maintain oxygen level so they don't get tired as fast as a normal person with a normal pulsating heart rate. Some adverse effects can be, it can be too slow of a heart rate, which can cause signs of decreased cardiac output. Your PR interval is still anywhere between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, which is consistent, meaning you can take it from the beginning, the middle, or the end, and it'll still be the same. Your QRS is anything less than or equal to 0.12 seconds. There is no known treatment for patients who are sim uh, symptomatic. Um, they may consider atropine and oxygen if they are symptomatic. This is what a normal sinus brady rhythm looks like. If you look at your R to R intervals, they're spread out. But it's still having, for every Q, there is a P that is married to the QRS. It's just trudging along slowly. The next sinus rhythm we'll talk about is a sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia are sinus rhythms where your sinus nose fires at a rapid pace. It fires faster than the normal pace, which your normal pace is what? 60 to 100 beats per minute. Your impulse still originates in the SA node or sinus node and still travels down the conduction, normal conduction pathways just at a faster rate. Your QRS complex can be either positive, negative, or isoelectric depending on which lead we're looking at or which lead is being monitored. Criteria for a sinus tachy are your heart rate is anywhere from 101 to 160 beats per minute. Your regularity is still, of course, regular. P waves will still be upright matching and always married to the QRS. It loves that QRS. Um, causes, it could be because of atropine or other medication, hypoxia, emotions, stress can cause you to have tachycardia, pulmonary embolism, patient could have suffered from an MI, or they can have CHF, which is congestive heart failure. A fever can cause you to go into tachycardia. Um, Vargas nerve inhibition or thyroid toxicis, toxicosis, toxicosis, meaning a thyroid, thyroid toxic, your thyroid is toxic. Your PR interval is anywhere from 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds, which is consistent, doesn't change. So if you take your PR interval from the middle, the beginning, the end, it's all the same. Your QRS is anything, uh, is anything less than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. Some adverse effects to having a sinus 
tachycardia is you can have decreased cardiac output, which can cause myocardial ischemia if heart rate becomes too fast for too long. Some treatments for sinus tachycardia are they can consider beta blockers to kind of help slow down your heart or increase your oxygen level to help slow down your heart. This is a sinus tachycardia. As you can see, your R to R intervals are really close together. The next rhythm we'll talk about is called a sinus arrhythmia. Sinus arrhythmia is the only sinus rhythm that will have an irregular rhythm. It's still the impulse comes from the sinus node. Its pattern is just um, cycle, usually corresponds with breathing pattern. Usually sinus rhythmias happen when people suffer from sleep apnea. Um, QRS complexes can be either positive, negative, or isoelectric, depending on the lead that is being monitored at that particular time. Your rate varies according to respiratory patterns. Your regularity is irregular. Your P waves will still be upright matching and of course married to your QRS. Your PR interval will stay consistent and it'll stay between 0.20 to 0.20 seconds. Your QRS will be less than or equal to 0.12 seconds. Some causes of sinus arrhythmia are heart disease, breathing pattern, very common during sleep, such as sleep apnea. Adverse effects, there are usually none. In treatment, there is usually no required treatment. This is a sinus arrhythmia. So if you look at your R to R's, they kind of sporadically not consistent. Of course, they go according to your breathing pattern. So if we take a look at this first R to R interval, we have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 here. Then we have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. Um, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, this one's 18, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, that doesn't look very irregular. Yeah, 17. Oh, maybe here. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Here. 5, 10, 15, 20. Ah, there it is. 5, 10, 15. 5, 10, 15, 20. 1, 22, 23, 23. Okay. So this was makes it irregular. Right. Our next rhythm we're talking about is called a sinus arrest. Sinus arrest is a pause that occurs when regularly firing sinus nodes suddenly stops firing for just a brief moment in time. One or more PQRST sequence will be missing depending on how long it stopped firing. An escape beat from a lower pacemaker may then take over for one or more beats. QRS complexes can be either positive, negative, or isoelectric, depending on which lead we're monitoring at that specific time. Your rate can be occur at any rate, depending on how fast or how slow that sinus arrest is pulsating out. Your regularity is regular but interrupted by a pause. Your pause is not a multiple of R to R interval. 
Your PR interval is anywhere from 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds before the pause, and it should be the same after the pause has passed over. QRS is less than or equal to 0 0.12. 0 seconds on sinus speeds and may be greater than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds if ventricular pacemaker takes over after the pause. So it all depends on what takes after the pause occurs. Is the sinus node going to kick back in or is the AV junction going to kick in after the pause? Because remember, if the sinus node fails to fire, an escape comes into play, which is usually the lower pacemaker after it starts to take over of the failed pacemaker. So if the sinus node fails, then the AV junction will take over. That's what we call an escape. Your P waves are usually normal before the pause and may be different after depending if an escape beat has occurred. Some causes of a sinus arrest are sinus node ischemia, meaning your sinus node is damaged, hypoxia, digitalis toxicity, or other medication. Your adverse effects, of course, is decreased cardiac output. Treatment for sinus arrest, they'll give you atropine or oxygen if, if, you're, if you have symptoms. Um, whole bradycardia include medication. This is a sinus arrest. <clears throat> so as you see, it started out as a normal sinus rhythm, and then it stopped. And then the AV junction took over for that one split second, and then it went back to a sinus node. So in other words, if your heart, if the sinus node stops firing for a brief moment in time, an escape rhythm comes in, which is your AV junction, takes over for that brief moment in time until your AV node starts picking up again, which is what happened. The last rhythm we're going to talk about in the sinus category is called a sinus block, which we also call a sinus exit block. And basically, it almost looks like a sinus arrest. It's just that the pause occurs when the sinus node fires its impulse on time, but pulses exit from the sinus node to atrial tissue is blocked. So somewhere along the line, the impulse is blocked to where it cannot come through. The beat that the sinus node um, sends out is not conducted, is not conducted anywhere. It's just hanging in limbo. Pulse will be a multiple of previous R to R intervals. Exactly two or more R to R intervals will fit into this pause. QRS complexes can be positive, negative, or isoelectric depending on the lead being monitored. Your, R, uh, your rate can occur at any rate depending on how it started out. Um, when it started firing before that last sinus impulse became blocked. Regularity, we would consider that regular but interrupted by a pause still. Your QRS is less than or equal to 0 0.12 seconds. Some causes of sinus block or sinus exit blocks are meds, hypoxia, hypoxia <laughs> vagal and vagal stimulation. Of course, your P waves will still be upright and matching and married to your QRS. Your PR interval will stay consistent. Some adverse effects can be decreased cardiac output and treatment for a sinus block would be atropine, oxygen if symptoms progress, um, whole bradycardia induced medication, This is a sinus 
block. Hmm, kind of looks like a sinus arrest, but it's not. As you can see, it pulsated out right and then it had a pause. And then we had our escape beat and then it went back to regular. So question is, how can you tell if you have a sinus block or a sinus escape block from a sinus arrhythmia? Well, we take our pause and we figure out our R to our interval from here. So if it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 41, uh, wait, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. So we have 50 small blocks. So if we divide that by 2, so 2 goes into 5 2 times. We have 1 and 0. That's 5. So if we have a whole number, then we have a sinus block. So if we have an odd number, which Twenty-five is an odd number. So if we have an odd number, then we have a sinus block. If we have an even number, say it came out to twenty-four, even number, then we have a sinus arrest. So odd block, even arrest. And that's the easiest way to determine if you have a sinus block or a sinus arrest. So if you divide by two and you have an odd number, it's a block. If you divide by two and you have an even number, then it's an arrest. Next, we have a following of 25 rhythm strips where the first 10 are single lead strips and the remaining are double lead strips. I will work one of the rhythm strips for you just to show you to, to show you what to do to determine if it's regular, uh, sin normal sinus rhythm, sinus arrest, sinus block, sinus arrhythmia, sinus tachycardia, or sinus bradycardia. So as you can see, we just have a P, R, S, P, R, S, T wave. So we have a R, S wave. So our P is here. Our R is here. Our S is here. And our T is here. So to find out, first and foremost, remember in chapter 6, we had to ask ourselves five questions. Are there any QRS complexes? Yes. We do have QRS complexes. Are they uniformly shaped? Well, they pretty much look the same. So we would say yes and uniformly shaped. And I cannot write that good to get all that in here. So uniformly shaped. So next we have to figure out what? Regularity. So of course we're going to go to R to R and count how many squares. So that's 1R. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27. So that's 27. From that R, then this R to this R, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So we have 26 here. Then we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 
27 from here to here. Then 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So 27 from there. So our regularity is regular. Right? So next we got to calculate our heart rate. So we determine our regularity is regular because remember what I always said, heart rate rhythm is determined on how we calculate heart rate is how it's determined by regularity. So being that this is a regular rhythm, we're going to use our 1500 method. So we're going to take 1500, divide that by 27, and that equals 55 beats per minute. Beats per minute. So, first of all, we looked at, we asked the first question, are there any QRS complexes? Yes. Are they uniformly shaped for the most part? Yes. Next, we have to defeat question two. What is this rhythm's regularity? Well, we determined that this rhythm regularity is regular. Next, we have to calculate heart rate based off of regularity. So being that it's a regular rhythm, we used the 1500 and we calculated 1500 divided into 27, we came out with 55. So our heart rate is 55 beats per minute. P waves, are there any P's? Yes, we have P's, so yes. Yes, there are P's. And are they married to the QRS? Yes, they are married to QRS. So married, to QRS. All right, so next we have to figure out PR interval. So PR interval starts, and let me do this in blue so you can see, because remember it's consistent, so I can do it at the beginning, the middle, or the end. And I just choose to do this one, because uh, let's do this one. This one looks a little easier. So we're going to go from the beginning of P. And it's kind of in the middle to the beginning of Q. But we don't have a Q. We have an understanding of Q. So here. So that's one, two, three, four. So we're going to say four times zero, zero point zero four, which equals zero point one six, correct? Zero point zero four times four equals zero point one six seconds. S E C seconds. That is funky C. All right. Remember the difference between QRS interval and QRS complex. Complex is just looking for a description of the QRS. QRS interval is looking for calculation of the QRS. So remember it starts from here from where you left off with your PR interval to here, just before you S the flex up. And it's on the line here. Well, if I can get it, thank you. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. So that's, what did I say, four? Yeah, four. So that's four times 
times 0 0.04 equals 0 0.16 So now we have calculate. So now that we got all our criteria in play, let's run through our criteria. Well, we know in order to be determined if we have a normal sinus rhythm, our heart rate has to be anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Huh? That would give away. We can stop right there. In order to be determined if we have a sinus tachycardia, our heart rate has to be 101 to 160 beats per minute. 55. No. We know a sinus arrhythmia, our regularity has to be irregular. Nope. Our regularity is regular. To be a sinus arrest, we know one of the criteria is we have to have a regular beat, a regular with a pause. Nope. Sinus block, regular with a pause. Nope. So that only leaves a sinus bradycardia. This criteria only fits what we calculated only fits a sinus bradycardia because yes, we have the QRS complex. We have the regularity, which has to be regular. The heartbeat has to be anything less than 60 beats per minute. Our PR interval and our QRS interval must fall within normal range, which they do. So the interpretation of this is sinus Brady Cardigan or Sinus Brady. If you put Sinus Brady, it's still right. Because, who? Brady Cardigan. Wow. All right. So, this particular rhythm is a Sinus Brady Cardigan. Let's work one more rhythm. <clears throat> Rhythm two, let's go through our questions again. Are there any QRS complexes? Yes. Are they all uniformly the same? Mm, no, they are varied. So we would just put yes and varied. Regularity. Regularity, let's calculate. Let's see. We have R to R here. That's mm, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is 11, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 12. Okay, so far, let's, let's look right here. 5, 10. Okay, that's 10, but we're still within one to two blocks. Um, that one's 5, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so it looks like a regular beat. So we know it's reg the rhythm, the regularity is rhythm, regular. So let's calculate heart rate, which is the third question. Heart rate would be, being that we know it's regular, so we would take 1500, divide that by 11, which gives us a heart rate of 136 beats per minute. So we're trying to get an idea of what this rhythm is. P waves. Yes, we have P waves. For every P waves, they are married to QRS. So married to QRS. Married to QRS. PR interval. So we know anywhere in this line, we can take PR interval and it's consistent. I'm not going to calculate it because it's too hard <laughs> for me to draw a straight enough line for you to see exactly. But you know, P is from here and then from here. And then you count the little blocks. So one, two, three, about four. So four. And then PR in, uh, QRS is from this line here to this line about two blocks, yeah, two 
blocks times 0.04. So go down our criteria. We know it's not a normal sinus rhythm because a normal sinus rhythm is regular, but with a heart rate of 60 to 100. We know it's not a sinus brady because it's supposed to be regular, but a heart rate less than uh, 60 beats per minute. The only other rhythm that has this fits this criteria is what we call a sinus tachycardia. So this particular rhythm is a sinus tachy or a sinus tachycardia. And I'm only going to put sinus tachy. Alright. So work through the rest of the rhythms that I have been assigned to you. If you have any questions or comments or anything, text or text or message me and I will gladly help you figure out some more rhythm strips. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and made everything so easy for you. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.